Alright, so right now I'm spreading some contact cement. Um, I use barge, but you can also pick up um, some DAP contact cement. Either they have real small bottles, I believe at most Walmarts, or a quart canner at um, Home Depot is pretty cheap. But anyway, I'm spreading contact cement all over the beaver tail. And uh, then I have to let it dry. But a couple of um, things that I've learned to make it easier since I've been doing this is to prep the tails. So each one of these tails that I'm spreading glue on currently, uh, I've already got two coats of glue on them at least. And then they were allowed to dry well until I needed them which could have been several days ago that I started this or a week ago or whatever but I let them dry generally um, completely but you can also let them go for an hour or so and come back to them but what I did was uh, I trimmed them down I usually cut them to about seven inches because that works for all the grips that I have to do and will work for just about every grip out there I mean it's a little long most of the time but you can trim off the excess later. So I've trimmed off I trim it off to the uh, narrowest portion I can use on the small end because it's thinner and then I measure back to the butt end of the tail and I trim it off at about seven inch, six and a half, seven inches and that way you're getting rid of the thicker part of the tail. So I trim those I spread a couple of coats of glue on them or so until it's got a good glaze on it and then I come back later to uh, when the bows are ready for tails and I'll soak them in warm water or if I don't have to stretch them out a whole lot the grips are pretty simple I might just run them under warm water on the the back side of the tail uh, until it absorbs enough moisture to make it a little more pliable. Then I pat everything dry as I did with these and I spread one last coat of glue on them and set them to the side to wait for them to get properly tacky which is um, kind of sticky a little bit but not so much so that you lift up the the hide with your finger when when you touch it, I mean it's not wet, but it won't lift, lift the hide up with your finger when you touch it like that. So these tails here will wait for a while. I've got some more that I'm going to get ready for the next time I have to do bows. So now again, all of these have had two coats, I allowed them to dry. Soaked them in water, patted them dry, and then got a little backer sheet here. Um, put my last coat of glue on them and then set them to the side to dry again. Now I'm going to put one of two coats that I put on each one of the grips or the, the bows and I put them on thin I mean you don't want to put it on super thick but you're going to come back and put a little bit more on when this is dry and this is probably give it 10 or 15 minutes or so and just check it for dryness it um, dries quite quickly on a hard surface and uh, not quite as quickly on the tails themselves so uh, I'll finish painting these up and then we'll come back to you when I'm ready to start installing
Okay, so this tail's ready. It's a little sticky, but it's nothing sticking to my fingers and coming off on my fingers. And uh, I guess it's hard to explain exactly what it should feel like. Now when I do it, I take the thinner, narrow end of the tail and I wrap around the shelf side. It doesn't require a spot nearly as wide. And uh, I start by kind of centering it up on the uh, belly side of the grip and run it down with my thumb really tight into the throat. And then I force it around. Now some water will come out of here and it's not really a big deal. If it puckers up a little bit, push it back down. Now you don't need fancy tools to do this. You can do this with a pen. A blue pen works pretty good and it will wipe off. This is a um, special leather marking pen and this wipes off quite easily. So these can be found at uh, Springfield Leather and they're just two or three bucks. Buy a bunch of them and use them quite a bit. So I marked down the center line on the back side of the grip and I cut that excess away and when I put glue on here I did not put any right on this back side there because I'm going to peel it back and forth and back and forth and it's just going to pull the glue off anyway so I line that up it looks pretty good and uh, now I go over to the other side and I force it down into place. And the advantage of using that leather marker is that it'll transfer the line to the underside. Now, again, it's not completely necessary. If you're really careful about um, marking and trimming, them off a little bit you know not necessarily try to get it all at once you can do it without that whatever you do do not over trim it because you will not stretch that tail and pull it tight and close up a gap so it's got to be just right all right again you can do this with a pen and it will wipe off pretty easy with a regular pen and I will trace out the off side of the shelf. Sometimes I change up my pattern just a little bit. Certainly do for different type of uh, bow risers. And if you take a um, razor blade, a sharp one, I suggest you start off with a nice new one each time and pull the tail up into the knife so you don't scratch the bone you are the whisper I go around until I get to the shelf side and again just being careful all the time and here I run the blade across the top of the shelf you can go back and trim this stuff up a little bit later if you need to doesn't have to be dead on right off the bat. Now, typically what I might do, especially if I'm having a hard time uh, getting the tail to stay down, if it's a really difficult grip, is I take an elastic bandage and I pull it real tight. The nice thing about this is that the tail can breathe through that and it will dry up underneath the bandage. If you use stretch wrap, plastic wrap or something, 
it cannot breathe through there and it won't ever dry until you take it off and uh, get this on out good and tight especially in the throat of the grip and I will come back and finish that tomorrow night that one's good till tomorrow night when it'll be good and dry I can finish the trimming mark the holes out for punching and then sew it up clean off the extra glue alright so this one is dried we'll take off the tail It's laying down real nice. We got a small wrinkle in there. We roll that out. A screwdriver. And that cleans it up real good. Takes a wrinkle out. Alright. This one is a two piece, so it makes it easy for trimming the uh, bottom part of the tail. But if it was a one piece, I would just trace a line all the way around it in whatever shape or design I wanted. And then, uh, still glued, they call the glue loose. something I mean you can use a piece of rubber preferably uh, something that won't transfer black marks this is a chunk what's left of a uh, what they call a glue eraser you can also get that at Springfield Leather not sure where else sells it and they're two or three bucks but you can get by with just a chunk of rubber can help or you can do it with your thumb. Wear your thumb out a little bit, it'll grow back. Alright. Would have been easier if I had to put a little wax in a socket and they slide in and out real nice. So now I've got my ruler out, and I generally mark them at quarter inch increments, and you slide it back and forth a little bit to find out the best best place to start to where it ends up in a good spot. Make my lines. Lengthen them all the way across, try to have them nice and parallel.
All right, you don't have to do this, but I like to have them nice and uniform. And I'll draw lines, parallel lines in the top to bottom lengths so I know where to punch my holes exactly. If you try to keep it uniform. you peel back the layer one layer of time generally just using the edge of the rover here to free the tail up a little bit if you had a finished riser up underneath it, you'd want to be a little more careful not to scratch it. Alright, now you can punch a hole with anything here. You can have a sharpened nail, as far as it goes, in a, in a channel locks or a vice grip. And punch holes that way, or a little leather punch, uh, pliers type. This is a special hole punch that I use, does a good job on it. Pretty expensive just for doing one or two tails. But I do a few hundred tails a year, and it has worked out well for me. And I'm just going along and at each one of the crosses, cross marks here, punching a hole. I'll get done with this side, I'll flip over and do the other side. Make sure you get all that little leather punch outs out of the way if you have them. Is James going to come to every one of the uh, events with you? I don't know. We haven't talked about that. I think he thinks he's going to. I don't have a problem with him going to every event. use uh, string serving. The artificial sinew also works real well. You can use just about anything you want to actually. Cut you off an ample length. String. This is a um, lacing needle. It's not really sharp on uh, one end very much. It's designed for lacing through already pre punched holes. You would have a hard time punching beaver tail, beaver, or punching holes through beaver tail as you sewed. slathered up this area with glue and I hadn't done it previously. Now unlike the normal way that you'd use contact cement, I'm going to go ahead and start stitching this almost immediately. It will dry and it will hold. I'm going to delay just a little bit. So it tacks up 
uh, just a tiny bit and then I don't get as much on the needle and the string as I'm lacing it through and back around. Probably been 30 seconds or so, that should be enough. Stitch it in any fashion that you like. If you like the baseball stitch, which is what I do most of the time, or you can cross stitch it. But I go through the top hole and then back around and through the top hole again. You can see how it crosses right at the top there. Don't pull it tight right away because we don't want it starting to stick down to the grip until I've got a few of them laced up just like that. While I hold one side tight I go down through with one needle alternating hole skipping a hole on each side. Can you say that again? Alternating sides and skipping a hole doing every other hole on each side. get down to the bottom and I go over the top and back under on the last hole making a straight line there also so it's straight line at the top then it zigzags all the way to the bottom now and if you pull this line too tight you will tear the grip as tough as it is it's easy enough to tear with a string Under the strand on the close side, the side closest to me, and over the strand on the opposite side, back under on this side, over on that side until it's done. Just back and forth. it all the way down doing a baseball stitch get to the bottom make sure everything's tight now I'm going to tie a square knot which is right strand over left strand then left strand over right strand if you don't do it like that you're tying what they call a granny and grannies have a tendency to loosen themselves up square, square knots will be stay tight alright so now it's in place I gently tap it down. That helps the glue or the leather to adhere down with the glue. Basically applying pressure. And I take my rubber glue eraser, go back up and clean all the excess glue off. 
this will take your lines off. It'll even take the pen off a little bit. back a little bit so they don't show. You gotta go around and clean off the excess glue and lines and you're done. We sell beaver tail grips off our website. We generally have black and brown. Um, not always. But certainly one of them and you can find it on bigjimsbowcompany.com and also on our social media platforms. Mm -hmm.